This is Bug Snacks, condensed. The game starts with you aboard a flying ship. A giant flying pizza bumps into the ship and you get knocked off to the ground. As you explore an unknown land, you fall and get knocked unconscious. Flashback to two weeks prior, you're watching a film in which you're introduced to Lisper and her girlfriend, Egabel. They discovered an uncharted territory named Snacktooth Island, where there's a newly discovered species known as Bug Snacks. They're the most delicious thing in the world. You haven't lived until you've tried one. <laughs> it's true. Half bug, half snack. There's nothing quite like them. Since you're a journalist, Lisbert wants your help to spread the news about bug snacks to the public. Your editor, Clumby, hasn't been ecstatic about her latest performance. It doesn't matter how eye-catching your articles are if I'm stuck cleaning up your sloppy work. Clumby thinks that pursuing Lisbert's story is going to be another wild goose chase, but she gives you a chance to make something of this. Back to the present, you wake up and find a fellow Grumpus named Philbo. Lisbert? Is that you? Wait, you're not Lisbert. He's starving and can barely move, so he asks you to find a bug snack for him to eat. Using a trap Philbo provided, you catch his trappy bug snack and feed it to him. His arm turns into what he just ate, a temporary side effect of eating a bug snack. You feed him three more bug snacks, snackifying the rest of his limbs. Now that Philbo has regained his energy, he guides the way to town. You and Philbo come across Wambus, a grumpy old farmer who's been growing ketchup crops. Without Lisbert around to catch bug snacks, I gotta keep us all fed. Wambus hurls some ketchup at Philbo, which attracts a bug snack that sends Philbo flying. But don't worry, he's okay. You catch some of the bug snacks around that are disrupting the farm and you feed them to Wambus. Afterwards, he decides to head back to town, planning to restart his farm there. Y'all just get along now. I'll catch up. So, you and Philbo meet Befica, a former pop culture journalist. It says right here on my snack scope Philbo, personality type, squeeb. Skills, none. Friends, none. It also says, you're a terrible leader. After Befica shows you how to sort through information in your journal, you head into town. Well, here we are. You have an interview with Philbo, and find out that he stepped up as leader when Lisbert went missing. But nobody took Philbo seriously, which led to some problems. All the townspeople left after a big fight, so now it's up to you to regroup everyone. One of the first you meet with is Gramble, a grumpus who refuses to eat any bug snacks, considering them to be not food, but companions. If you're looking for bug snacks, you best turn back! These little ones are my kin! He asks you to return his bug snack pets that ran off, and after you do so, he agrees to go back to town. Gramble sees bug snacks as his family, but Wambus sees them as nothing but livestock, so this causes some serious friction between the two. Bug snacks will never love you. You don't know a thing about love! That's why your wife left you! I'm gonna do violence to you. Another Grumpus you bump into is Wiggle, a husband musician who's been seeking inspiration for a new song. I simply cannot rest until I find my muse. Wiggle believes that eating bug snacks is what she needs, but nothing comes up after having eaten a few of them. She decides to head back to town anyhow. Gramble seems to be infatuated with Wiggle, but unfortunately, it seems like Wiggle is only feigning romantic interest in return. Unbeknownst to Gramble, Wiggle has been sneaking to Gramble's barn during the night and eating his pet bug snacks. Come on, come on. Wiggle needs a midnight snack. Are you darling? What are you doing here? Anyway, back to Bevka, she's still holed up in her cave. She absolutely loves digging up dirt on people, and her next target is Wambus. His behavior's been strange every night before bedtime, so Bevka wants you to find out what he's been up to. Oh, Triffy, I miss you so much. I would hug your cactus facsimile but it would only hurt me further. That's the tea. Wambus has a fake cactus wife he talks to, which Befica is delighted to hear about. Befica realizes that being back in town will be way more entertaining for her, so she moves out of her cave. At the desert, you meet Wambus' estranged wife, Triffany, who's an archaeologist. See these skeletons? Something's fossilized in their stomachs. Looks a bit like a local bug snack. After assisting her research, you convince her to go back to town. Wambus and Triffany reunite, and they reconcile by admitting their differences and deciding to help each other out. Now give me a kiss, you hot dish! Let's hope the cactus doesn't get jealous. Around the same place you met Triffany, you find Cromdo, a shady salesman. Cromdo gives you a launch pad in exchange for a few bug snacks. Totally for sale, and not at all stolen! His business would probably do better in town, so he turns his feet into popsicles and he heads back. Philbo is happy to have the Grumpuses back in town, so he organizes a campfire. The group goes around and tells scary stories until they hear a disturbance nearby. Grumpin Snacks, it's coming for us! You and Philbo check it out and find out that the noise was coming from a Grumpus named Chandlo. Whoa, it's Philbo! 
And somebody new? Hey, how are you? Chen Lo only came to grab some stuff and he leaves town soon after. You meet with Chen Lo again later, who's busy trying to get Snorpy, his roommate, to go outside and exercise with him. I'm sorry, Chen Lo, I'm not coming outside. I'm this close to finishing my next invention. Return to your lifting in peace. Snorpy is a paranoid Sheldon who believes that Grumpinati is out to get him. You feed some buck snacks to Chandlo to help him push past his physical limits and you assist Snorpy with his work and also feed some buck snacks to him. Chandlo and Snorpy are thankful for your help and they agree to head back to town. Chandlo repairs the bridge for you, allowing you to reach the outer part of the desert. You meet Shelda, a sage-like Grumpus who likes to speak in complicated metaphors. In seeking inner peace. Shelda has renounced material temptations. Shelda believes bug snacks to be toxic to one's body, so she refuses to eat them. She tells you to liberate a few bug snacks for some kind of spiritual awakening. Crack open the eggs. Give them new life. After you're done with all that, she goes to town. You arrive at a beach area next to an active volcano and meet Fufti, a haughty scientist who studies the effects of eating bug snacks. Fufti eats a few bug snacks in order to study their effects on her own body. Is there a threshold of grumpusness? When every cell of my body is bug snacks, will I remain Flufty Fizzlebean? After experimenting with her own body, Flufty decides to continue her research back in town. Flufty meets up with her brother, Snorpy, and they take turns roasting each other. Their exchange ends with Flufty pointing out Snorpy's reluctance to confess his romantic feelings towards Chandlow. I'm no coward, I- You still haven't told the green meathead how you feel. Lead me to my business and I'll leave you to yours. You eventually make it to a snowy mountain where you find Agabelle, Lisbeth's girlfriend. Oh, oh, you're the reporter! The one Liz was always talking about! Agabelle leads you to an ancient stone door, thinking it could lead to Lisbeth. Using Lisbeth's notes, you figure out how to open the stone door, but it turns out that you need three grumpuses to open it. So you decide to ask Philbo for help. Agabelle! Oh, it's really you! Oh, you're here, alive, and not dead! Yes, it's me, Philbo. Philbo and Agabelle try to push the door open, but falling rubble stops them from doing so. Agabelle doesn't want to continue, because she doesn't want anyone else to get hurt. She explains what happened to Lisbeth before she went missing. I was being stupid, and I slipped up on the cliffs while I was trying to show off. The earthquake hit, and, and I was gonna fall, but Liz saved me, like she always does. She got swept away, and then the ground opened beneath her, and... It swallowed her up. Bilbo has a heart to heart with Agabelle and they decide to find Lisbeth when they're more prepared. With pretty much the whole crew back in town, Philbo sets up a big party. Everyone's in high spirits. Vefika has come to somewhat respect Philbo as a leader. Wambus regrets how he treated Gramble and his bug snacks and apologizes to him, which Gramble fully accepts. Floofty apologizes to Snorpy for insulting him, which Snorpy somewhat accepts. And Snorpy finally gathers the courage to ask Chandlo to be his boyfriend, which confuses Chandlo. What? Bro, that doesn't make any sense. Snorpy, we've been dating for years. Is that clear enough for ya? <laughs> Everyone's dancing and having a good time, which of course means something bad has to happen. And, well, you still need to interview Lisper, right? So our end is nigh! The volcano eruption causes the ground to shake and severely damage the town. Agabelle shows up and tells everyone to prepare for the oncoming disaster. I'll build a couple bonfires, maybe a watchtower, where I have a few prototype traps that I could put to use. You head up the mountain with Philbo and Agabelle and get the giant stone door open, but the three of you fall through the ground. You reach the Undersnacks, the underground area that's entirely made up of bug snacks. You reunite with Philbo, and the two of you make it to a chamber where you find a giant bug snack creature revealed to be Lisbeth herself. Philbo, you... here. We have to gather up the others and get off the island! You decide to conduct an interview with Lisbeth, and she has some startling revelations. This is the island's true form. It's bug snacks all the way down. Apparently, bug snacks are parasites. Eat enough bug snacks and they will take over your mind and body, making you into one of them. A bunch of bug snacks fed themselves to Lisbeth, but she managed to resist their control and she became their queen. Lisbeth's the only thing that's holding the island together, but she can't for much longer. She wants you to get everyone off the island while she stays behind to keep the bug snacks at bay. Agabelle shows up and doesn't like the idea of Lisbeth sacrificing herself, so she decides to just become part of Lisbeth's body, which somehow works out for her. It worked! Agabelle, you beautiful genius! 
<laughs> Lisbur and Dagobel toss you and Philbo back up to the surface. You and Philbo meet up with Snorpy, who's busy preparing the airship for takeoff. There's an onslaught of Bugsmax attacking the town, so it's up to you to fend them off. So this is where the ending can differ. If you fail to defend the townspeople and they consume too many Bugsmax, the stackification will cause their bodies to fall apart. You win, Grumpinati. Your secrets die with me. Snorpy! No! We're a family now. And we're gonna be together forever. The only thing that matters out here is Bugsman. You and any remaining survivors board the ship and lift off. A giant flying pizza comes, but Lizbert and Agabelle scare it off, and they wave goodbye as the ship flies away. Thanks, Liz. Egg. You and the survivors arrive at the mainland and Philbo decides to hunker down with you until his stackification wears off. Some time passes and you meet with Clumpy. Philbo's there to be a witness as you share your story. Although Bug Snacks is written off as mere fiction, Clumpy is impressed with your story. But unfortunately, you get fired anyhow. This story's a page turner and all. But you lost your job the second you walked out that door! Clumby leaves the room, and Philbo decides to run for mayor, asking you to help him. The game ends here, but if you manage to fend off the bug snacks during the final battle, the ending plays out a bit differently. All the townspeople survive and make it to the mainland. Despite the perilous journey, everyone's optimistic about the future. Afterwards, things play out exactly the same in the bad ending. You still get fired, and Philbo decides to run for mayor. But during the credits, you see that each of the characters are doing pretty well for themselves. Even Lisbert and Dagobel get a happy ending. They somehow desnackified themselves, and they're both just chilling. After the credits roll, we hear Clumby talking to an unknown individual. No, I sent them away. It would be hard to make them disappear at this point. Do they suspect anything? Hmm, hard to say. Could be they're idiots. Could be they know the truth and they're keeping it quiet. Very well. We will have to keep our eye on them. To quid it us. Omne Vivamex Bug Snacks. However, there's a secret ending in which you will instead hear a voice message from the unknown individual. Clumby, pick up! Somebody's been through my tapes, Clumby. The secret tapes in the secret place. They know! How could anybody even find them? That is such a violation of my privacy! It had to be them. Lisbert's crew. Flibbo, Tiffany, Wumpus, whatever their names are. Well then... I have a task for you, Miss Clumbernut. Find out everything you can about these so-called survivors of Snacktooth. We'll see how they like it when I learn all of their secrets. So yeah, call me back when you get this. This is Jamfoot, by the way. Okay, bye. So that's it. That was Bugsnax Condensed. Thanks for watching.